Oh, hello. Oh. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, you caught you caught me. Unawares. Unaware. I would say maskless, but there it is, right there. We're six feet apart, and we both are clean and, and <laughs> sanitized, me and me and Peg. Uh, this is Peggy Burton. I'm John Gray, by the way, Good if morning. you're watching for the first time. <laughs> Peggy Burton, uh, my sidekick and surrogate sister. I know, and that is a good thing. I'm so glad to see you this morning. Ah. You know, I don't see a lot of people. I have seen no. people this week, though, because we've been auditioning. Well, yeah, tell us a little bit about that, that South Jackson Ghost Country. I'll tell you uh, that we we did it social distancing. We did a lot of virtual auditions, and so there was no health problems. Uh -huh. And as we put the show together, we will treat it differently than we have in the past. You know, we're not going well, we a bunch to. a bunch of people together. And anyway, and we may have to put less people in the auditorium. But that's just the way it is. Well, yeah. And, and if we have to, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll uh, you know, we could do, uh, uh, of course, are we going to do it three days or just two? It'll be Friday, Saturday, Sunday matinee, like so, we always like we do. Always we do, had a lot, so. of good, a lot of good talent showed up last night and some new songwriters and just a lot of interesting things. Good. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And uh, commercials you know, are, coming, are going, yeah. Coming along. <laughs> You, are you ready for are you ready for the old dog to step in and ready for the old dog to step in <laughs> and wag his tail? So wag his tail. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Today I, we've got a couple of dancers from uh, Beverly Long Studio, and oh. we're opening the Civic Center this weekend for their per, their dance recital. And Good. that again, the seating is you know separated somewhat. Right. Right and plenty of sanitizer and uh, everybody's welcome to wear a mask and we'll talk about that a little bit later but we yeah. are opening the Civic Center Friday night. Wonderful. Saturday and Outstanding. Party. You know, our, uh, there, it's just so important. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, it's, been, it's been interesting to me how the Grand Ole Opry has done what they've done. On a Saturday night they bring, they bring stars in there, superstars, and uh, they're in there with no audience doing that show for an hour to keep that happening as the longest running radio right. show in the history of radio. I find it very entertaining because it's easy to hear and right. they're separated and it's a lot of times acoustic. I love that. Uh, people though, Peggy, who, who aren't performers you know, we're all performers in a way. Life's a performance. Yeah. But who aren't stage performers don't realize how important it is to a performer to have that audience in front of them to, to feed off of. That's right. It, it gives you an energy that you can't get any other way. And it's been interesting to me to, to watch how the performers perform Without an with audience. an empty room. Yeah. And, and no applause and, and uh, well the bottom line is people that are real performers they practice by themselves a lot excuse me I've been I have an allergy it's allergy so, season sorry, yeah. Tullahoma, it's Tullahoma <laughs> Tennessee where it rained for what how many forever, how many, forever? And, and last night it rained again this is the moistest town the moistest. <laughs> in, in middle Tennessee but uh, the flowers grow and the and the grass grows. Oh my gosh! And the weeds and grow. The weeds grow. And the pollen <laughs> comes up. It's forever. And, yeah. And you, all of a sudden, you're sneezing and coughing, and you don't have uh, the coronavirus. You have allergies. I know. I I hope this coronavirus will finally have a vaccine. I, I hear that there's one in the. There, there, it'll happen. Coming up and. But it'll be like every other virus that's ever been. It's like the flu. We're all going to have to get it sooner or later. Probably, We yeah. just hope that, that when everybody has an opportunity to get it, there'll be an opportunity for them to take a shot that'll get rid of it. I, I or have at a, least keep it yeah, under control. I have a weird theory. When I was little, you know, I was out in the dirt. I was eating mud pies and whatever. And so we got immune to almost everything. Yeah. But now... All the germs and all the varmints that were in the dirt, yeah. you know. I remember. I do. I promised my sister mud was pies. making mud oh, pies yeah. and I ate one. Oh, yeah. I did, too. Well, maybe a little of it. But anyway, 
We had a lot of reason to and get rid got of our, cut, got, got cut, cut by yeah. different. You got poison ivy, you got poison oak, you got cut by a stick that probably had something on it, and it swelled up and turned red. And after about the third time that happened, your body has immunity to whatever to get whatever's immunity, there. So, you know, I can remember a friend <laughs> of mine whose wife uh, was so protective of her children that she had, and some people have done this, uh, a lot of people have probably done it, built a picnic type table with benches and a box on top of it to put proper sand in oh. where they could play in the, sand. in the sand and not be on the ground and they would cover the sand at night to where no animals could get to it for fear that those little girls would catch something. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you're going to catch it sooner or later. It's easier to deal with it young than it is old. I love some of the pictures that Jacqueline Painter has put on Facebook with her little Pearson. Uh -huh. one, one was he had his little boots on and he was in mud and it was on his face and down his body. He was having the time of, of his life. <laughs> That's a Pearson for you right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Jacqueline will be choreographing the country show. Yes. She's wonderful. You know, and Martha Brooke was here last week, and, you know, we, we, we're so fortunate to have these younger people stepping up and, 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 and taking staying control in and staying here. Uh, yeah, it's wonderful. Staying here. That's one thing that's good about a small town. You know, uh, we just, and you can look right to my side over here, that side, that side. That side, right back there behind me. You can see that Telehoma shirt, right? Now get a shot. Can you see it? <laughs> there, there it you is, go. Telehoma, where I call home. You know, we're so fortunate to live in a small town where a lot of the, the, lot of the big problems that happen in the big cities don't really happen here. They do happen some, but not in the magnitude. Right. It's controllable what happens. I feel like that we have a really nice area here. And we all know each yeah. other, and so when somebody acts out, <laughs> it's not like if there's a stranger comes in and starts acting out and causing problems, you know it's a stranger. It's, it's, well, not, it's not somebody that's... In a small town, and or like in the rural areas, d different parents help parent everybody's child. Oh, of course. They know who they are. And if they see them doing something wrong, they'll help take care of that. They're, they're not ignored. And I think that's one of the most important things about neighbors and people in a community. Well, and, to and help each in, other. A, in a, in a uh, we, when we grew up, we were still uh, nationwide probably an agrarian society. You know, there was agriculture and there oh, were yeah. small farms. You just don't see, you don't see many hundred acre farms anymore. You know, people made a living off a hundred, 150 acres right. of land. And now that, that doesn't happen. And, and when you have a rural uh, society, you know, I, I wrote something I'm gonna read later on in I the show. I love that, by the way. Uh, about South Louisiana, where my dad was, yeah. was from, and they were rice farmers. and outside of town on a bunch of land and and I called my cousin down Kathy down in, in Crowley and asked them how they were doing and they're all doing well of course New Orleans was just a nightmare no that's you know been a couple terrible. hundred miles away but <laughs> the rest of the, a lot of that state that it's not cities it's it's farmland it's, it's farm and, land, and those yeah. people aren't out, aren't involved with each other that much and they're just busy. Other when they go to the co-op or something yeah. like that, you know, or the or the Conoco station, and so they're all well and good, and uh, we're well and good here. Did you basically. ever work in a rice paddy or? I went with my I went with my grandfather, uh, who was my I was, uh, his name was James Powell Gray, and my name is John Powell, Powell Gray. Gray. Powell is a family name, uh, and so we have the. Same initials, Jacob. My son is Jacob Powell Gray. Oh, for I, that, you know, for I that hadn't reason. thought about that. Yeah. And uh, he was my hero. Grandpa was my hero. He was about. He was Jacob is the size he is because Grandpa's that Grandpa size. Grandpa was tall. Grandpa was six. I think about six two, 
and he was the shortest of his four wow. of, his, of his three brothers. He had three brothers. Did any of them play basketball? <laughs> no, they, they they didn't play basketball. They worked. They could have. Uh, but but you know he wore to go in the field. He wore khaki pants, a white shirt. You are kidding. A white boil. Granny called them boils. She she had a pot. Yeah. She'd throw his shirts in boiled. the pot and boil them. A boiled and shirt, boiled white shirt, and a and a big wide brim hat. Boots with his pants tucked in his boots. Yeah. Of course, you you're in water. You're in a, you're in rice land. It's it's and a shovel, and that's how he left that's the house how he every left morning. The house every day. And when I was in Crowley, down there in the summertime, we would visit down there. When he left, I left. Oh. I followed him just like a tick. <laughs> you know, he was just he was my hero. I understand that. Yeah. My my son was that way with my father. He was a farmer. Right. And, uh, Bart loved going down there and working on the farm. Oh yeah. And uh, well, that was so he much. He learned a lot of great life skills from my dad. I appreciate that. And and South Louisiana is so different from here. Yeah. Because it's all about marshland and 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 animals that live in the water. There's snakes. There's gators. there's gators. There's all this stuff. Did you ever we, come and we don't have. a gator? Uh yeah, small ones. Yeah. In the in the bays, but uh, there's a fish down there called a garfish, yeah. an alligator gar, which is a fish that's about great, that long. Yeah, yeah. It has a mouth a like a mouth. like an alligator. Yeah, and they eat everything. And will eat you. If and that, you're not uh, well, they can hurt you, but they won't. <laughs> yeah. eat, uh, they won't. <laughs> You'd get away from them before they eat. <laughs> yeah, I'm very leery of alligators. Uh, we used to go to golf places, and uh, one time I was standing on the porch of our little condo and there was a little small lake over here and uh, somebody had let their little dog out and the alligator just shot out of that lake and one bite the dog was gone. <laughs> I just stepped right back into the There house. you go. There you go. Hey, guess what we've done? We've <coughs> we sat here with time. nothing with, with <laughs> nothing to say and we've useless driveled this opening segment up. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. there's some good things coming up. Huh? I, I have some people from the mental health center that are going to, I mean, not NAMI, National Association of Mental uh -huh. Health. They're going to come and talk. And uh, we have some dancers from the dance good. recital, dance two recital. seniors. Very good. So I think stay Winston, tuned. I think Winston Brooks is going to come see <laughs> oh, us and a, and a few more folks. So don't you go away. we got some great stuff on today's Just Plain Living. Hello, I'm Ray Nois. This is a critical time in Tullahoma. On August the 6th, voters will have an opportunity to elect a new mayor, one who can provide proven, experienced leadership, one who knows how to get things done and keep Tullahoma moving. I recognize the value of Tullahoma's excellent school system. Our system is recognized as one of the best in the state, and I'll ensure that our schools continue at that level. I will not vote to raise property taxes in order to have a balanced budget until all other options have been exhausted. I'll work closely with our city staff to ensure that my physically conservative values are incorporated. I've served on all city boards involved in economic development. I see that as a way that we can broaden our tax base and avoid a property tax rate increase. Some developers have had issues with their planning and codes department. I'll commit to these improvements. There'll be consistency in the instructions from planning and codes without changes from day to day. And there'll be predictable timelines for providing delivery dates for plan reviews, permits, and inspections. Timelines that will be met reliably. Now, while we can't do much about the traffic on 41A and 55, we can improve our local streets and sidewalks. And this I commit to do. So I ask for your vote for proven, experienced leadership. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. It's time for every family and business in Tullahoma to go green, 
and recycle. Telema Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Tullahoma, and recycle. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. And the other day, one a, a very spectacular thing happened in Tullahoma. We're very fortunate right now to have two World War II veterans that are over 100 years old. And Thomas Gwynn, one of our beloved uh, citizens and veterans here in Tullahoma, turned 101. And uh, we were there instead of having a party, which they wanted to do because of the coronavirus, there was a drive-by stage to Thomas's house, and he was absolutely tickled to death. Philip Scoggins went over there and got a little interview and some video, and we want to show you that right now. Happy birthday, Thomas. Well, there's about to be a drive-by, not in the normal sense that we hear about on the news drive-by. We're going to have a drive-by birthday party. And his friend, Rob Norman, uh, Rob is very... Rob takes care of him. I call him. I call him Mr. Gwynn's handler. Here he comes now, and uh, <clears throat> Rob takes Mr. Gwynn to a lot of these functions that, where you know he, they want to recognize people uh, who have done great things like him and 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 uh, saved the world almost single-handedly. You know, and I, I wrote a little poem about him. Says that Hollywood has its. It says he calls himself the Lone Ranger, and he is the Lone Ranger. He's the last one of last Ranger of his battalion that's left, and. Uh, said Hollywood has its heroes who will deliver in times of danger, but Tullahoma has the real deal, Tommy Gwynn, a.k.a. the Lone Ranger, and uh, he is an awesome force, so we just appreciate him so much and want to uh, be a part of this great celebration. That there's going to be a drive-by, um, the, the uh, cars, a parade will come by and just celebrate him. He's going to sit out here in the yard and, and, and just enjoy himself and and, and and he wanted to have he wanted to have a normal uh, big birthday party but due to the uh, coronavirus and everything he called me one day and told me said that said that he was concerned about everybody's health and he said that he would just go to captain d's and get him a dinner for or somewhere for for his birthday dinner so but he didn't want to endanger anybody's lives to uh, uh trying to have a party for him so he is such an awesome man i tell you what that's my hero there he is this today is a today of celebration for thomas Gwynn, lieutenant thomas Gwynn. uh everybody says local hero i say world hero uh because he was He's been applauded by the French government, the Korean government, uh, every government, pretty much every world government that, that had participated in World War II and Korea. Uh, Mr. Gwynn, I've known him for over 50 years and it's been a blessing. I, I never knew he was a man of this caliber all that time. Uh, he was my mother's TV repairman back when I was a young man and my mother loved him and he loved my mother and they just, you know, I, I've, I've grown to love him over the years. And I found out one story that really drew us, I guess ties us closer together, was that when I was being born at Camp Forest in the base hospital there when this was uh, during World War II, at the end of World War II, Camp Forest was here in Tullahoma, and, uh, which is now Arnold, Arnold Air Force Base. Uh, when I was being born there, in November of 1945, Mr. Gwynn was there also, but he was having dental work done. And and little would we know that we'd come together, you know, at some point in life, that uh, where we our paths would cross, but God has a way of doing things. Uh, but Mr. Gwynn celebrated his 100th birthday last year, and I already got involved in it a little bit more uh, for his birthday party. 
and uh, he wanted me to be a part of it and I sure appreciate that because he is such a friend and a hero and he but if many that don't know his record Mr. Gwynn was battlefield commissioned I think he went in as a private and I guess got promoted to a corporal and then I think on the battlefield he was promoted to a lieutenant uh, he has a great story been wounded 25 times I know he has 13 purple hearts the French Legion of uh, Honor Merit a uh, uh, medal of I forget the correct exact name uh, but the, the French uh, Legion of Honor medal I believe uh, Koreans, one, some Korean author wrote a book about him and his was the only picture in the book. I couldn't read a word of what was in there, but I saw the picture and I knew who it was about. So uh, it's just a blessing to be a part of his life. He's um, a POW twice in Korea, uh, escaped both times. He's just awesome. And, uh, but he, and he loves to tell his story. You know, so many older people nowadays, even back when I was growing up, my grandfather wouldn't tell much of a story about, you know, his life or anything. And maybe he was just maybe was not proud of everything that had transpired uh, uh, the way life unfolds sometimes uh, to us. But the bottom line is that, that Mr. Gwynn, uh, he, I think he, he loves these memories. And of course, that's all we have at this point in life. Uh, every day is a blessing you know we um, yesterday is history tomorrow is a mystery and today is all we really got uh, the past really with this moment is all we've got but the past is all we really have to fall back on and of course some diseases uh, rob us of that and it's a shame uh, Alzheimer's that would take away someone's life that's essentially it you know the whole memories and um, but memories really are all we've got. And Mr. Gwen, he loves his memories. And, um, and I do too. And we love hearing about them. Uh, that's the problem this day and age. A lot of people just don't tell their past or their, uh, for whatever reason, maybe they don't lay it all down. Everybody ought to, needs to know their history, I think. Uh, well, some people don't really care, I guess. But, but a lot of us do. A lot of us want to know more. And we strive and go to all types of means uh, all the time uh, to, to research and and, and do these things, but, but I'm just honored to be a part of Mr. Gwynn's birthday party. Here at Manchester Funeral Home, we know the importance of living and working in our local community because it's those families who we serve during their time of need honorably. We believe in supporting local business and offer only 100% Batesville caskets, the best in the industry and a driver of our local economy. If you want straightforward and fair pricing while working with the people you know, choose Manchester Funeral Home, serving your community since 1932. And pre-planning and pre-funding can be the best gift you ever leave your loved ones. Call us to pre-arrange. Manchester Funeral Home, our family, caring for your family since 1932. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Good morning. You're going to be glad you hung around for this segment because it's dancers. They're young. They're beautiful. I have Olivia Anderson 
and uh, Molly Georges, and there's graduating seniors from Tullahoma High School and going to appear in this week's weekend's dance Blue recital, finally yes. at last. Yes. And we're going to start with a video that is of the two, what are you dancing to? Ease on Down from The Wiz. Okay, that's, yes. and we're sorry that you're not going to hear the music, but we're going to just keep talking while they dance and, and imagine the music. <laughs> yeah. I love this. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. We've got to help out with the choreography this year. Oh, did yes. you? Yes. So that's been a really fun experience. And you are, are you in ballet shoes? We are in yes. point shoes, yes. Okay. Yes. I love this. And this is Friday night and Saturday night at 7 o'clock. South Jackson Civic Center, and uh, we do want to talk about the tickets and how we're social distancing and all of that. Yeah. Okay, who is who? Um, I'm Olivia, you're Dorothy, on this. Yes. I, I can't. And I can't I'm, tell which side it is, but you're in the blue, sort yes, of. Yes. That I'm blue. Glinda with the crown. Okay. I love this. Thank you. How long have you been dancing? I've been dancing, this is my 14th year. 14th year, and you? I've been dancing since I was two, so 16. Since you were two? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I always love the tiny tots yes. Yes, when they dance. they're adorable. They're always adorable. I know them. that Olivia is going to major in dance, right? Yes. So you plan on auditioning for a ballet company somewhere? I don't actually. I plan to go more of a physical therapy concentration. Okay. So I want to stay in the dance world with that, work and, with dancers. And you want to stay fit. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which dance is wonderful for staying fit. Yes. Oh, yes. <clears throat> How many hours a day do you say you dance? I dance upwards of 10, or not a day, I guess 10 a week. So like around about 10 hours a week. Yes. And yes, you? The same. Both of you probably doing the same yeah. thing at the same time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know you've been very careful to social distance during this time and wash your hands oh, day yes. and night yes. all day long. Yes, it's been a very interesting experience trying to dance with social distancing yeah. and wearing masks. It's very hard to breathe. <laughs> Approximately how many students are in the recital? There are 25, 25. I believe. 25? Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Yes. And uh, I'm assuming you have solo dance it, dancing. We do. Yes. The two of you, yes. especially yes. since you're graduating. I've always felt bad that we didn't get to do more with you this year. Yes. Because just all of a sudden, boom, it was all over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really sad. And uh, when, did, when did Beverly start you back dancing? Three, three weeks, weeks ago. <laughs> three weeks ago. Yes. So all this is coming off with three weeks hard work. Yes. yes. Do you get Long tired? Hours. Do you get oh, exhausted? Sure. Yes. Well, you look fabulous, and that's, Thank that's you. what dance does for you. I know that it's Saturday night and Friday night at 7 o'clock. Now, yes. Beverly told me about the tickets. All parents, grandparents, if they want tickets, to my knowledge, they go by the Civic Center office and pick up their tickets. Is that correct? Yes. As far as you know? Yes. Do you know how much they cost? I do not. Oh, a eight or ten, something Around like that. There. Yes. And it's a wonderful price. And if you want to call and see if there are extra tickets, because we will social distance in the audience. That's very important. Mm -hmm. yes. So we're sticking by that, and we're keeping sanitizer everywhere. and. I would, if at my age, wear a mask. Yes. And I, I do that, and I wear one here, too. I just uh, am very careful. And we don't allow any, I think we'll be checking temperatures as people come in the door. All right. Okay. And so don't come if you're sick. And Beverly and I talked about it. We think that if you show up at a quarter till seven, all of the grandparents and parents will have been seated. And so if there's extra seating, then you can come in. And yes, anyway, it's going to be, tell me about your dancing, Olivia. Tell, what made you first want to dance? Oh, well, 
I always tell the story. I remember for about my fourth birthday, I got a plastic hot pink and purple ballet bar with the mat that hauled all the different yes. positions. Oh, wait, did you get that too, Molly? Yes. And it came with the DVD, and I used to <coughs> fall onto that DVD all the time. And so my mom eventually put me in lessons, and I've loved it ever and since. And you've been there ever since. Yes. And I know you tap dance. Yes, I do. And you all of do it. whatever it is that. Mm -hmm. Beverly gives to you or Jean yes. Marie mm -hmm. and uh, Molly you've been dancing since you were two yes so my mom just enrolled me and I really don't remember a time before dance I've yeah. always just been dancing so you just dream your first memory is probably <laughs> yeah, dancing. dancing you've been dancing ever since mm -hmm. I've uh, I've known Beverly since she came to Tullahoma I can't exactly tell you the date because a long time ago but I read in the paper that we had a new dentist in town whose wife was a, a dance teacher mm -hmm. So I knew instantly that somebody I wanted to make friends with, yes. and uh, it's, to be associated with her all this time has been very special. Yes. And she continues to put out wonderful students like you two. <laughs> we loved it when you danced for us with the big band. Yes, it was so much yes, fun. And uh, I hope I hope to see you this weekend. Hopefully, I can get in because yes. I'm looking forward to it. And you're not doing Sunday matinee. No, no. no we're not. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I have this terrible allergy. Let's talk to Molly about what you're going to do now that you're a senior. And you're, I mean, now that the senior is done and you're mm -hmm. fixing to go to college. Yeah, so I've been planning, I have orientation Wednesday. And so I've basically just been planning how my college experience is going to go and what routes I'm going to take. And you're going to Belmont. Yes, I'm going to Belmont. Wonderful school. Major in neuroscience. That's, the plan is med school, but we'll see how that goes. Well, and I may choose to minor in dance. I haven't really decided yet, but... You know, I would just, because that I think a lot of people that do something like medical, mm -hmm. if they can have a, even as a hobby, to dance mm -hmm. in shows and whatever, it's a nice balance yes. because it's a grueling yes. <laughs> job that you'll be doing. And you're going into... Uh, major in dance yes and you've already told us what it is you're going to do so I think how fortunate we are that young people have visions and I hope you don't have to spend your life doing your classes with a computer <laughs> <laughs> because it's so I think the social part of it is all important yes. well girls the time is up remember the dance recital is this weekend what was the theme of the dance recital the Wizard, Wizard of Oz, Oz and then second half is Showstoppers. Oh, okay, Wizard of Oz and then Showstoppers. It's always wonderful. Costume is fabulous and we've got to go. Thanks for coming. Yes. Thank we'll you. be back. My great grandfather started it in 1900 and now it's 2020, which is 120 years. We still measure your feet, still try to help you find a good fit or just a good old-fashioned shoe store where we'll measure your feet, make sure you're in the right size, and help you find a comfortable shoe for men, women, and children. We're gonna make your style. We're gonna make your style. Service and quality at Clayton Shoe Store. We're gonna make your style. Ah, the glory days. Running to daylight on the gridiron and chasing a ball with a mind of its own cheering the team to victory, and marching to the beat of your own drum. Memories that last a lifetime. But sometimes we're reminded of our glory days in ways we'd rather forget. Get back in the game. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live and play well. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. about this and that. It's Conversations with John and Pat, with John and Pat, with John and Pat. Hello everyone, I'm John Rickman. 
And this is Pat Welch, and we're here to present today the conversation with John and Pat, the 19th installment. We're about to get to 20. We're, going, we're, we're, we're coasting downhill on it, John. Pat, you were making mention a while ago of this little uh, uh, tuner that I, I have, and uh, it's a great little device to keep your guitar in tune. And since I tr changed strings the other day just for this segment, I wanted to... Uh, show folks that because you seem to be intrigued. I am intrigued with it, John, and, and um, those that think that um, Chapel Hill may be a little bit limited in uh, accepting technology need to take note of that. Yes. It'd be similar to the first person from Chapel Hill to, to uh, get on a commercial airplane, probably. <laughs> well, you can you can put uh, it on a cell phone now and tune your guitar by wow. a cell phone today. But I want to uh, do we, we've got a segment here I think everybody's going to be interested in, and it, it's in regard to University of Tennessee and a family that uh, uh, was well recognized there. Well, wish I was on top of Rocky Top down in the Tennessee hills. Ain't no smoggy smoke on Rocky Top, ain't no telephone bill. Watch two strangers climbed on a rocky top looking for a moonshine still. Strangers ain't come down from a rocky top, reckon they never will. Rocky top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old rocky top, rocky top Tennessee. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Well, I missed a chord there, but who cares? It's uh, unnoticed. <laughs> I believe and, it was and, noticed. And uh, with uh, Padhead Summit's uh, celebration of life service last night, that was was done and John it was probably done better by you then than maybe some I doubt of, that. some in the crowd. I appreciate yeah. the comment though. Yeah. Flattery is always helpful. That's it's exactly right. And it, it will get you further than some people think it will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my uh where are you headed, John? We uh, well, uh, I will want to remind you you brought by a book. I brought by a book because I won it. I'm a winner, you know. I, Absolutely, just but, like Coach Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but. But I used to live next door to a fellow named Mr. Orville Finney out on Blue Creek Road. And Mr. Finney, uh, I used to help him on the farm a little bit when I was younger and uh, wanting to do things like that. So Mr. Finney one day casually mentioned that Shirley Majors used to cut hair with him up in Tullahoma in the same barber shop. And uh, the question was by who was the TWSAA man back at that time but anyway he came to rotary and spoke and he ronnie asked carter. ronnie carter and he said now if anybody didn't answer this question you'll get one of these books well i answered that question and everybody in rotary is pretty astounded that i knew the answer and anytime, i was astounded too and i remember you and i can show out in rotary it is it does astound them john <laughs> that's exactly right <laughs> go ahead pat <laughs> well uh, john took it the book by uh, my wife's place of work and uh, which was awful nice uh, of him because he knew that once I got it, that it would engross me for about three or four days. And and uh, yeah. and he was in, in difference to my wife, uh, she could have, she knew the same effect was going to happen. And, and uh, if I wasn't going to clean any dishes or make any beds or participate in any kind of family <laughs> life, she could have held that book from me. But she was nice enough to let me look at it, and it was incredible. It uh, it covered the history of the TWSAA, which is what. Tennessee Secondary School Athletic Association that has governed Tennessee high school sports, I believe, since the very early 1900s. And it was divided in segments of history and so forth, and it was divided in the uh, successful coaches. And it had just a lot of, of uh, local history uh, in it. And one of them, of course, would have been the, the Majors family that they would have had five boys and a, and a daughter, and uh, Coach. Major Shirley Majors was the father, and his wife's name was Elizabeth, but I believe she went by John. So they had a mm -hmm. uh, the husband's name Shirley and the wife's name John. And I think you said that there was. A I, I wrote a little song one time. Stony Jackson shared that uh, 
tidbit with me, and uh -huh. I wrote a little song called A Mama, Papa Named Shirley and a Mama Named John. I won't <laughs> bore you with that song, but that's... Uh, well, he, uh, Coach Majors, Shirley Majors, was a barber, as you've mm -hmm. already pointed out, and he, uh, during the uh, World War II periods, at least, he cut hair in the Old Harton Arcade, which would have been uh, right off of Jackson Street. And um, wasn't long ago, he, uh, his family was raised in Lynchburg, or he raised his family in Lynchburg and Huntland. And uh, Coach Majors, being John Majors, uh, periodically visits both places in, in Tallahoma to visit friends and uh, I got to be with a group of maybe ten guys that ate lunch downtown with him and it was really really uh, interesting and uh, he said that uh, during Camp Forest days when we had 60 70 thousand troops being trained at uh, near what's now this Arnold Lynn Development Center that uh, these uh, soldiers would come in on on Saturday to get their hair cut and, and for uh, at that time would have been a really high price for it like a dollar he'd cut the hair and, and give them a shave and he was the chair was full all day long uh, he made probably more money then than he, he uh, at least Johnny made said he made more money then than he did when he was anytime he was coaching and they'd bring the five boys would come with him some and and he'd give them enough money to get one coke I think and see two uh, movies at the time and and they just talked on and on and on about how uh, fun life was at that time. Philip why don't you put um, that picture up that picture's then uh, Coach Shirley Majors is on the uh, right now he of course he's when he retired he was the head coach of the University of South and Swanee and had some extremely successful teams I believe he had two or three undefeated teams and uh, if you go uh, going opposite the way you normally read from uh, go from right, uh, to, right left. to left the first gentleman is his oldest son which I think that was his senior year at Huntland that would be Johnny Majors or John Majors that was the head coach at UT for so long next to him uh, is Joe Majors who uh, was a quarterback at Florida State uh, the next one is Bill Majors who was an assistant coach until an extremely untimely death uh, that we'll talk about maybe at some point and we don't have enough time today uh, and I believe that was his eighth grade year and then next to him is Larry Majors who was the smallest of the, of the crew when he was after he had uh, grown and he played for uh, his daddy at Swanee and was a real successful player and then the youngest on the far left is Bobby Majors who was probably the best athlete of them all and was the biggest mm -hmm. of them all I, I can remember he was 44 played in the late uh, 60s and uh, John I think when they punted to him there wasn't anybody in the open field that could catch him. He, I, he could make at least one guy miss almost every I'll tell you my time. little tale. Tommy Allen and I went to see a Penn State and Tennessee play at Nayland Stadium. And uh, uh, Lydell Harris and Frank, Franco Harris and Lydell Mitchell were two of the running backs for Penn State. And they were highly rated in the country. And... Uh, that ball would be punted to Bobby Majors and the most beautiful wall would be set up and he would read and d dart and, and, and dash through or around, whatever. It was, it was amazing that game. They won 31 to 11 that day and it was UT's heyday. I'm not too sure that wasn't the first night game at Nayland Stadium, too, John. That was a really, really big deal. Uh, it was, Penn it, State being an intersectional it was, it was uh, powerhouse. And we're going to come back and do a little bit about uh, the Majors family at another segment, uh, yeah. but we've been told that we and need to cut it speed out. it up a little bit here. All right. Well, uh, but, I guess we'll have to shut down the 19th installment now, then, John. Well, I'm going to continue with a little bit more Rocky Top. On, on the next segment, segment 20, so we don't just, lose just continuity kind of right and kind of celebrate the, the <laughs> meet, meeting uh, segment number 20. That's not the end of the conversations. Uh, we'll we'll take his place by storm if we have to to finish this segment up. Number 20 is coming. Talking history about this and that. It's conversations with John and Pat, with John and Pat, with John and Pat. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the paint. Uh-oh. 
I just knock the tree over. This is the paint doctor. I got the color wheel. Now you know what a color wheel is? It is the wheel that the paint works where you pick all your colors to paint your room. It could be a multicolored beard. It could be a underarm fan. You never can tell. One thing we do know is that it's time to paint. You know, you can make your wife very happy if you go to your house and paint some rooms or you paint you paint the outside of the house, the inside of the house. It makes them very, feel very good because you work hard for them and they like that. All women like to see their man sweat. You know, they do, they do. Honeydew is what they do. And you get to do it too. So you go to the paint works at 1960 North Washington Street and you see David, David Eichenen over there. And he's the real paint doctor. He fix you up with color. It's so nice when the color is right. Go to Paintworks today, Martin Senor. See, Martin Senor, right there. Martin Senor at, at the Paintworks. Bye, and we see you next time. Oh, I'm burning up. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with News Leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and I want to take a little time to talk with you about uh, our lives. Look behind me again at that Telehoma t-shirt back there, home. H-O-M-E. Tullahoma has home in it. And we're all so very fortunate who've had an opportunity to live in a small town and grow up in a rural environment. And, you know, as a writer, what I want to do right now is tell each of you, pick up a piece of paper and a pencil, buy yourself a book, a notebook to start off with, whatever, or if you want to, if you want to, uh, force yourself to do something, go somewhere like a, the Celtic Cup is a good place to go because they have these beautiful leather bound books that you can buy and, and use it to journal with, use it to write about things that are important to you as a young person or as an older person. You know, I've written a little bit on and off my whole life, but late, uh, as I've gotten older, I've written more because I want to, you know, I want to call back those days of, of childhood and summertime and the, the, the times that seemed like they've just disappeared. And what's happened with this coronavirus and everybody having to social distance and stay at home, we have found so many old things that we used to do that that society and and the hustle and bustle of the life we've all been living has completely knocked out of our lives. People are playing board games again. People are going, I saw a beautiful commercial the other day. It was uh, Home Depot, I believe, or Lowe's, 
I can't remember which one, which is bad. Uh, that means it didn't work for me, but the, the, the subject matter, it showed a dad painting a wall, a dad building a room uh, for their children. You know, things that were being done family oriented. And, and as we all look back, we will see the times and the things we did that were important to us that helped mold us as adults. And they, you know, a lot of times the teachers involved, but uh, almost always your family's involved. And every writer who writes music, songs, every country singer's got their front porch song. And uh, I wrote one years ago, I've done it on this show, and I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna, not gonna play it and sing it, but I'm gonna recite it because it's important to me and it's about my grandmother's house in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and out behind their house was a willow tree. And it's funny how when you're a kid, how trees get involved in your life. You climb them, you find shade under them, you find imagination under them. And so I wrote this about Phillips Lane in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. There was a magic place out back of Grandma's house a ways where all the kids on Phillips Lane would go back there and play. It's where Davy whipped Santa Anna and Robin's bow rang free. The good guys always won beneath that old willow tree. And that old willow stands like an ancient southern hymn. Stories told and lessons learned hang on every limb. Imagination's playground, a home for memories that whisper when the wind blows beneath that old willow tree. It's where Grandpa and Uncle Bunch would take their evening shade, taking turns cranking till the ice cream was made telling tales and laughing about the way things were back when, as we rode the threads of time on the yarns they would spin. And that old willow stands like an ancient southern hymn, stories told and lessons learned hang on every limb. Imagination's playground, a home for memories that whisper when the wind blows beneath that old willow tree. Now each of us have a special place we go to in our mind where life's still pure and simple, and that willow tree is mine. My imagination's playground, my home for memories that whisper when the wind blows neath that old willow tree. And so I wrote that years ago and I thought, well, you know, that's, 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 that's one grandma. My dad was born in South Louisiana and, you know, I never have, of all the crazy things that happen in Louisiana and the Cajun lifestyle, I've never been able to come up, it, just, it never has hit me that that thing I want to write. Well, the other morning I woke up, and as I've told you before, I, I pay attention to the, 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 the magic zone between sleep and wake. There's always something floating around there. And the, the little phrase, picking up pawpaws, put them in a basket, was going through my mind. And I thought, what in the world does that mean? Well, I got up and I started thinking about pawpaws, and a pawpaw tree is P-A-W-P-A-W, -A -W -A -W, and, and a pawpaw is a little round berry type thing, and it made me think of a china ball tree that sat outside of my Granny Gray's house in South Louisiana, Acadia Parish, and that's where we would go at that grandmother's house to... Uh, to find refuge, and because of that, and what else a pawpaw means, I wrote this, and uh, I'm gonna do that for you now, for my South Louisiana cousins and family. You know, sometimes experience brings a clarity of vision. See that shade tree in the side yard by the wash house? That's where my cousin Bubby and I took retreat from the noonday sun in Acadia Parish. Granny would run us outside to keep us from being underfoot while she cooked lunch for the field hands. And that was fine with us. Sometimes we would crawl under the house and lay in the cool dirt. But snakes liked it under there as well, so the shade tree became our arena. It was a china ball tree, but Granny called it the pawpaw tree. Why? I don't know, because there were no pawpaws and no basket to put them in. We went anyway and did what young boys do. We rode dick horses into battle with stick guns and swords. We sailed the Gulf of Mexico. We were pirates, and good pirates we were. 
The days were filled with visions of conquest, plunder, and all the adventures that imagination could conjure up. The most magical part of, of the day, though, was in the evening when the work day was done and my and Bubby's grandpa James would join us under the shade, followed soon by his brother Paige with his two grandsons, our cousins, in tow. Thomas and young Paige would lay with Bubby and me in the lush St. Augustine grass. The grandpas took a seat in one of the old metal rocking back chairs or the lattice and vine covered bench swing. Each of them had a cooler. One was filled with ice cold Dixie beer and the other was filled with ice cold watermelon. At this point, the real magic of the old shade tree would unfold as they told stories of the real battles fought, the real ships plundered, and the quest for Creole queens as they danced with the fireflies to a Zydeco band at the Fado Odo. The last time I was in Acadia Parish at the farm, Bubby and I sat under the china ball tree and talked for hours. As we got up and walked toward the house, I glanced back to a long lost yesterday. I heard a rice truck crunching down a newly shelled road and saw the grandpas rocking in the darkening shade, smiling at me. At that instant, I finally understood why it was called the pawpaw tree. As Bubby's children and mine ran out of the kitchen door with sparklers in their hands, lighting up the night like Cajun comets. And so that's for my South Louisiana retreat and, and my, a little bit of history and a little bit about how beautiful it is, youth is, and how wonderful it is to be able to take a pencil and a piece of paper and write it down for your children and your grandchildren to go back and see how your life was when you were young. What we're going to do right now, because this past Sunday was Flag Day, we're going to bring you Telahoma's, one of Telahoma's greatest historians to ever live, Mr. Bob Couch, with another story for you. Good morning, all you friends and viewers out in TV land, and thank you for our lady camera ladies that put it on the screen. If it wasn't for them, you'd never see a thing. And John, thank you for that introduction. It's always fun to be here and to share things and uh, history and, and special events with our friends in uh, TV land. You know, Flag Day is a special day. Old glory that uh, has just been a a wonderful tribute to our country and and the patriotism that it embellishes and the pledge of allegiance to the flag and all those things that make it near and dear to us. I um, read in the paper the other day about a, a veteran that said the veterans are almost forgotten but said that every time that uh, he sees the flag or hears the Star Spangled Banner it gives him cold chills because what it stands for, the freedoms that we enjoy. I thought I'd share with you today, uh, uh, even though Flag Day was yesterday, a wonderful reminiscing uh, remembrance of a flag that meant a whole lot to a lot of people, especially from 1941 to 1946, when the government announced that they were going to build a big army post in Tullahoma, Tennessee, and Governor Prentice Cooper uh, named it for our great Confederate cavalry general, Nathan Bedford Forrest, and it was called Camp Forrest in honor of, of that great general. And one of the things that uh, meant a lot to us was the post headquarters and the uh, wonderful men that trained and served there and uh, participated in the Tennessee maneuvers in 1942 and 1943. And when they were raising or tearing down the camp, uh, uh, many of those buildings were taken elsewhere 
For example, the Red Cross building on South Jackson Street was the Red Cross building at Camp Forest, and they and it's be, still being used for the original purposes uh, that the Red Cross was established for 83 years ago, and it maintains that building. But the significance of Flag Day uh, came to mind that we rescued the post headquarters flag that uh, when the post headquarters were torn down, we rescued this flag, and this is the official uh, 48-star flag that flew over the post headquarters at, uh, at Camp Forest, and has a lot of meaning. It was tattered and uh, rusty and faded somewhat, but the meaning of the flag is still with us, that it, it flew and was the headquarters for the camp, and uh, it's tattered on the ends, but occasionally an old veteran from Camp Forest Days would, would come by and see us, and we'd cut off a little square of the tattered end and give him so that he can have a memento of where he was trained, and he brings his children down. Uh, one of the veterans that from Cleveland, Tennessee, uh, Mr. Murray, uh, was at Camp Forest and on the maneuvers, and his grandson kept asking him, Grandpa, what, what, uh, where were you and what did you do? Uh, during the war, and so Mr. Murray wrote a book and entitled it "Grandpa Saw It Happen" as a tribute to his his grandson. The uh, and, and on another occasion, another topic. Uh, they mentioned soapbox derby a while ago. I saw my first soapbox derby in Dallas, Texas, in 1936, and all those children that made their their. Uh, racing cars were just so excited about it like they are here and we're looking forward to that event. Uh, I believe it's on the 24th of June. It'll be real good. But this Saturday, of course, is the, the southern wheels and spinning wheels and wheels in motion. It's always a great show at South Jackson uh, Civic Association campus there. And uh, if you like older cars, well, come down. It, it's uh, uh, June the 17th and it'll be a great day. We're hoping the weather would be good. If you like old cars and reminisce, that'd be the place to go, which reminds me of, of my grandfather's first motorized delivery truck, a 1920, I think it was either a Dodge or, or a Ford, but that was the latest and the most up-to-date delivery truck in, in Tullahoma. He just, I think, I don't know if he shot his mule that delivered groceries or the mule just died, but this is the modern, up-to-date, one-of-a-kind truck. I wish I still had that old truck. And that, I think, was about the same model of the first fire engine that came to Tullahoma. It was a, a real modern, up-to-date thing, and I think the pump on that old fire engine was probably a better pump than anything that we can have today. A lot of things to cover, a lot of reminiscing, and a lot of joy that brings back good memories from Tullahoma. We thank you for watching, and hope you have a good day. And let me remind you that this is not the end of the story because there's a whole lot more to come. Thank you and good morning. Nois. This is a critical time in Tullahoma. On August the 6th, voters will have an opportunity to elect a new mayor, one who can provide proven, experienced leadership, one who knows how to get things done and keep Tullahoma moving. I recognize the value of Tullahoma's excellent school system. Our system is recognized as one of the best in the state, and I'll ensure that our schools continue at that level. I will not vote to raise property taxes in order to have a balanced budget until all other options have been exhausted. I'll work closely with our city staff to ensure that my physically conservative values are incorporated. I've served on all city boards involved in economic development. I see that as a way that we can broaden our tax base and avoid a property tax rate increase. Some developers have had issues with their planning and codes department. 
I'll commit to these improvements. There'll be consistency in the instructions from planning and codes without changes from day to day. And there'll be predictable timelines for providing delivery dates for plan reviews, permits, and inspections. Timelines that will be met reliably. Now, while we can't do much about the traffic on 41A and 55, we can improve our local streets and sidewalks. And this I commit to do. So I ask for your vote for proven, experienced leadership. My wife Jackie has always been the life of the party, but things changed when she couldn't be as active anymore. They told me I needed a double knee replacement. It's not as big a deal as it used to be, but she still needed to go to rehab. I was amazed at how good the therapists were at Life Care. They took really good care of me. They took excellent care of her, and now she's back doing the things she loves, and that makes everyone happy. Life Care Center of Tullahoma wants you to get active and live well. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and I am so excited that my man, Winston Brooks, has, has come out of uh, quarantine and come to the show with us today. And uh, Winston, welcome. I've missed you. Thank you. Likewise, it's great to be here. High fives. High five. Elbow, elbow. elbow. <laughs> yes. What, um, such uncertain times we've been in, yeah. so this uh, feels normal again. It's great to see you guys and, well, and, and be back and here. Well, and y'all are back in the city boardroom. So we, yeah, we're back in the city boardroom, and we had a, a meeting last night, which we um, did live stream. Right. So people seem to enjoy watching uh, it on Facebook, but uh, we always made it available on P Head and on uh, P Head's uh, Facebook page and on the on the. Um, YouTube, or the, the YouTube, YouTube channel, yeah, you're, yeah, and so, and so, we're, too. right, so there's a call right now to to live stream it on Facebook, and uh, so we're evaluating that cost. So we had 26 or 36 people watching it last night, 11 comments, um, and uh, it, it's it's good, but um, you know the. Um, while people may enjoy watching it like that live, the um, state law is that the votes and everything have to be done in person, and, and any comments that citizens want to make, they either need to be put in writing and sent to the board meeting ahead of time, or they need to attend the meeting. So um, until the um, state law changes, being able to um, make comments online or in a live stream type right, of situation right. uh, don't hold that, that legal credence. But, but right. So we're looking at it, we think it's a good service, and if um, we're gonna start watching those numbers go up, and if our next live stream we you know, get yeah, into um, a couple hundred people watching or something like that, then it might make sense to invest in um, doing the live stream all the time with the help of we, your P-Head staff. We, uh, we did Miss Telehome, not Miss Telehome, graduation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's funny, it's hard to get numbers for somebody. We can't afford Nielsen sure. and stuff like that, but we did graduation, and we did it for five and a half hours that it took to do it. And then, because of the way it had to be done, and then Philip took and edited it down to, you know, an hour and 20 minutes or something like that, and he put it on the Saturday morning, and by Saturday afternoon it had over thousand hits on thousand hmm. views right right yeah that was a very popular thing I mean I watched it you know so, it, yeah. so I mean the the viewership is there sure and that's why we've done you know the viewership is here as well mm -hmm. but everybody doesn't have charter everybody doesn't have light tube everybody you know there's a lot of people streaming so you put it on your we, that's why we have our own YouTube page sure because people can watch it whenever they want to they don't have to schedule a time right 
they can go anytime and, and you watch can watch it, it anywhere. Watch yeah. it right. anywhere. On, yeah. on, on any the, device. On any kind of device. You've got to be there. That's right. Got to be there. So what's happening downtown? I want to know about downtown. It's downtown, downtown property owner. Want to know? Yes. Yeah, so, Tell it. Well, so one of the. Um, initiatives the city has is to just continue to develop the central business district because it's uh -huh. uh, such a, an important um, area for people to gather and do business and eat and dine and so we have recently rebranded the downtown as the downtown uh, Tullahoma Entertainment and Arts District and um, before the pandemic we were going to have an event on May 1st where we invited the community out get their feedback kind of try to do a kind of visioning session figure out what people wanted in their downtown, but also have a work party and redo all the beds along Lincoln Street in order to, you know, get people excited and see the kind of the vision that we've got for, for this new and better improved downtown. So obviously a lot of those plans were scuttled because yeah. uh, oh, yeah. of the, yes. the coronavirus. But what we did recently was um, me and um, Shelly Smith and some volunteers uh, and, and with the help of, of London's and Joe Keller, uh, we went out and we started with just one bed in front of London's and um, we excavated it by hand last week, which was like digging through asphalt. Oh, uh, I can imagine. It was a hot week, but uh, we got it done. And then the Shady Grove Garden Club donated uh, some beautiful, rich topsoil, filled it in, and they are coming back hopefully this week or next week, and they're going to do um, like this really beautiful landscape project where it's low maintenance. Um, then we're going to put the irrigation back in it and, and really begin to build a showcase bed that will be kind of at the entrance of a new uh, beer garden and a new pedestrian alleyway that will be kind of going in both directions. And while we are not able to get all the beds done in one fell swoop like we had hoped, what we hope to do now is with this begin to sell sponsorships for the other bids and then um, have signage in there uh, sure. promoting that person uh, and then um, pay professional people to do it so that we're not out there right <laughs> breaking backs. maybe Understood. get some uh, me mechanized equipment to do that but work. you but you have to you have to get a, you have to start somewhere that's right that's right so and we a just, prototype I mean every restaurant organization or big box store have prototype buildings that they build to see how things right. work and until they get everything the way they want it and that's exactly what you've done you've done a prototype island there mm -hmm. that uh, it's only smart it's only well, smart way to do stuff thank you we think so and we think the community is going to be very proud of it oh, yeah. and uh, then we're just going to get continue to expand that and build the excitement and hopefully take it on around uh, Atlantic Street yeah and um, so you, you mentioned prototype, we'll prototype buildings. So uh, another uh, initiative that the city uh, is pushing is um, the uh, trying to become the to be the entrepreneurial hub of the region. And so there's a long history here with uh, the Markhams and their uh, Southern Middle Tennessee Entrepreneurial Center. And um, there was also a where recent, we sit right where now. we sit right now. And um, there was an article recently published in. Um, a publication put out by the Heartland Group, which is out of uh, Benton, Arkansas. Uh, they're affiliated with the uh, Walton organization. And the um, article was about the top entrepreneurial cities in the Heartland. So not the East Coast, not right, the West right. Coast. And Tullahoma fared very high. In fact, uh, they were in the top, I forget the actual ranking, but in the top 20 for young firms, and um, knowledge power. And what that means is uh, firms that were under five years old and um, it, within those firms you have people that have uh, more than a, um, a, master's degree, a master's degree or a higher. So that's that knowledge power. And so we are well suited to you know for entrepreneurial activity and to be uh, and, and, and so what we're trying to do is really become we, we have an ecosystem already here for the entrepreneurs but it's not very visible so we right. want to make that a more visible ecosystem right. more robust make it easier for people to access a lot of the um, reasons that we have the uh, ecosystem is because of the Air Force Base obviously of course yeah. and then they've recently restructured that so there's a lot of subcontractors here and they're starting to break off in these young engineering firms but we want to make it more broad-based and not only get these engineering firms and all these really smart people, but we need nerds and cash. <laughs> nerds and nerds cash. And cash. There so you we go. can kind of try to recreate uh, Silicon Valley. So in a, uh, along the way, we um, the city acquired uh, the building at 127 West Lincoln Street, which I think you're familiar with, and it's uh, older heydays. I hear it used to have a hot dog stand in it. Well, uh, it used to be a, a women's dress store, 
It was right next to Clyde Phillips, which is now, uh, everybody remembers, older people remember Clyde Phillips Men's Store, mm-hmm. which is now an antique type of a spot. And then that store was uh, Lydia's Dress Shop. Then right. Wendell Hartman uh, got it, and his daughter had a ran a uh, salon and spa in there. Then there was a hot dog place in the back of it. Uh, great building. Yeah. Yeah, right building, big, right, I think it's about right 5,000 square downtown. feet. Mm-hmm. And, so, uh, so we want to make that a show place. We're working with our partners at TVA, also with the state ECD. We've been um, going through the TVA Innovation Academy, also an entrepreneurial um, training program through ECD. We're looking at some grants. Um, also um, trying to get through the downtown Main Street organization money to um, really turn that into a show place and create kind of a co-working uh, right. entrepreneurial or in- like innovation center. Um, and, and, you know, there's no telling what that's going to become, but once we can kind of get that, um, get, get our plan together, then we hope to bring uh, a lot of synergy there with some of our partners that, you know, have been in this for a long time. Right, right. And, and we think that'll create a vibrancy. And so that's why if you happen to be downtown and you see the new banners, the pedestrian banners say, innovate, create, learn, because that's what our strengths are in Tullahoma. We value education. We are innovative and we're very creative, as you know. Right, so right. that's, we, we, we've got the vision of putting that um, innovation center right there in that place. Uh, we've acquired the parking lot um, around the corner there. And right now we're looking at turning that into sort of a central gathering plaza. Maybe we can host events. Um, but we just don't know exactly. We, so there's a lot of excitement, a lot of opportunity, and we are asking for public's input. Anybody can always contact me downtown, shoot me an email if they want to get involved. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. One thing we do, you said something right there at the end, and we, we need to go about education in Tullahoma. We do need to give a shout out to Motlow College. Yep. Who's here? Not every town has a Motlow College well, or, been, or a University of Tennessee Space Institute. Well, both those so organizations both of those have been right with us very important. in all this work that we're trying to, right, to do. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, we we are proud to have those those types of higher education within five minutes of downtown Tullahoma yes. or 20, well, 15, 10 minutes. Yes. Absolutely. We've been doing a presentation, uh, and I know we need to go, but it's called Ten and a Half Signs of Civic Success. Right. Civic Success. And Tullahoma has all ten and a half. Two of them are you have a strong, well, three of them are you have a strong community college, you have a research university, and you've got an innovative school, uh, there school system. There you go. We so, got it. And, and we got, and we got Winston too. Brooks. No, man. I'm just, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. This server. guy right here, this guy right here is... is, is I appreciate the encouragement. Sh- Taken strides above and beyond anyone that's ever ever uh, been involved in the position you're in, and I, you don't. Know, I personally, and I tell you this all the time, and I'll never stop telling you till you go away. Then I'll be mad. So don't <laughs> you ever go away. Has done an outstanding job at what you do, well, and thank, thank you, you for welcome. what you are My doing pleasure. for enjoying. our community. You're very we welcome. appreciate you. Absolutely. Okay, we'll be right back after these messages. Smoking tobacco accounts for three of every ten fire deaths in the United States. Tullahoma Fire Department, Tullahoma Fire Department, need you en route to a structure fire, 202 Main Street, heavy smoke showing, neighbors advise child trapped inside. Lighters, matches, and associated smoking paraphernalia are the leading cause of preschooler fire deaths. We as firefighters know that most structure fires can be prevented. I've got one! I've got one! Command, this is primary search. We have a victim. Need EMS to meet us at the front door. Please help us to give you a fighting chance. This can be prevented. Contact the Tullahoma Fire Department for a free home safety inspection. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip. And then, boom, adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. 
Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with News Leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, Peggy, we're back, and we've had a great show today. Uh, great people came on. Wonderful and Wonderful folks. Something nice happening in Tullahoma all the time. All the time. And the region, not just Tullahoma. That's right. And what we want to do right now is this, is, this would have been Bonnaroo week. I know. And there's a whole lot of Bonnarooians who, uh, they're going to be going crazy. They won't so know what to do. So we've got the first show we they have ever did. the first Bonnaroo in 2004 we've been there since day one and we're going to close the show today with the grateful dead All right. we're glad you're alive to watch the grateful dead see you next time <laughs> Thank you.